Warning, we're gonna make some jokes about a band that if you clicked on the video is probably a band that you like. But we also like them, that's why we made the video and it took us a super long time and we like them. A lot. Don't get mad at us, please. Behold! The tool, a device in which you can input energy into it, and it will spit out equal energy in an opposite direction. That's pretty neat. That probably like went on to reshape the very foundations of possibilities for early mankind, when all we knew to be real was just like sticks and rocks. Plus it also looks like a giant dick and ball- Welcome B to another VOV episode of H D D Wolf, our show where we never practice and just brainstorm acronyms all day. Now, since we're still awaiting our next album to be finished and watch the world get gentrified as fuck, I've been really bored, and I've been getting really <coughs> <coughs> bored, and decided, hey, Tools a neat band. They play a lot of D notes. So I could play a lot of D notes. I can write a song about D notes in like a few days. Psh, that wouldn't be that hard. If you're new here, first up is story time. We're gonna talk about the band's rich history. We're gonna maybe give you a little refresher on why you love them so much. Maybe even just remind some people that they're not dead. And then we'll move on to the fully professional, totally educationally certified lesson section where we'll highlight the techniques and concepts in a step by step format. And then we top it off at the end with a 1080p playthrough of our very own original song, utilizing all the things that we talked about. We show you it in action, so you got no excuse not to just do it yourself. And FYI, while we were having fun with the dead horse beating of the tool delayed joke thing to death, we decided to just release the song as is without vocals, just with the foundation, because that's the part that apparently is supposed to take 45 years to make. Since a lot of you guys have commented on other videos asking if you can do vocals on those songs, I'm just gonna let you know preemptively, have at it. Go ahead, I wanna hear your best Maynard. You gotta illegally download the video from YouTube, you gotta do your own vocals on it, upload it, tag me, and then I will issue a DAMCA copyright strike infringement upon you because that is stealing and do not take my music. That counts as consent. But before we can even start flipping that quick tab of acid under your tongue and blasting off into alternating time signatures of 17, 13, triple tom filled, drop D fueled, riff noted, fucking bleh. Let me first go take a peep at the last video you guys had with your best guesses and your thoughts on the last episode of who you thought the teaser band would be. Hmm? Let's go take a look. Well, look at me, I'm like a good YouTuber. I'm reading all the comments. Let's look at all the tool. Oh, you guys sure are smart. You got me. You knew how it was tool. And you knew that I released this video at the. Hey, wait, whoa. What is that? What the fuck is that? K Mac. If you weren't picking up what I was putting down with that intro, it's that there's two discernible sides to what is called the coin of human history. There's the pre-tool side, which was coated with a thick, viscous layer of pentatonic solos and sniffing coke out of buttholes. And then there's the post-tool side of the coin of human history, which blew everyone's collective fucking mind balls off by turning a four into a fucking three. I think that I did too much acid in high school and can't remember what I said in 2001. <laughs> Okay, technically, so you don't use four threes to make the 12 because, oh, that would just be too easy, wouldn't it? No, you gotta use the five and a seven repeating alternating pattern to make the 12, because fuck it. Yes. And look, I'm just gonna assume that if you were a human being walking around with two legs under the sun in the 90s, you've heard of Tool, three Grammy Awards, worldwide tours, top of the chart albums, you get it, all right? You guys are legends. But aren't legends supposed to be like a thing of the past that are legendary? Is Loot the band official actually recording a new album? Or are they just trolling us? Leaving us to go back to the old music we used to listen to in the 90s? While I first initially thought, hey, I can just shit out a song in a couple days. This doesn't take a decade to record an album. Psh, no problem. I then accidentally fell in love with the idea of delaying this video as long as possible because it would be funny. I'm really sorry. But I mean, hey, it's fine. It's not like history is filled with overhyped projects being overly disappointing compared to the overly anticipated Anticipations. And well, yeah, okay, it has been a short decade since their last release, plus a couple years. But there is hope in the updates. Tom Morello says he's heard the album, said the instruments are halfway done in the studio, and then totally done, and it's just waiting for vocals. And then, whoopsie, just entered the studio, haven't recorded anything, look at my drum set. It was all but lies. Anyways, for the two people out there who don't know, Stool was formed in 1990 when guitarist Adam Leslie Jones met with vocalist Keenan Mayo Ustard. Maynard. I met Maynard through a friend from high school, and we started uh, Tool. <laughs> <laughs> so you got Adam on guitar, and you got Maynard on 
Maynard. And you, got, and you got Drew Carey living upstairs as a neighbor who gets introduced to the band through Tom Morello, the guy from the Rock Band games. And so Drew Carey probably decided, hey, I'm tired of listening to this band that's just a guitar and some dude singing all day. I'm gonna join the drums. I'm gonna be in the band. I'm gonna book them on The Price is Right. Hi, I'm Britney Spears. I'm Whitney Houston. Coming to you live from hell. Oh, and there was this other guy who was in the band. He, um, oh, what did he do? Oh no, every band, every band I do this, crap. No, he played, um, oh fuck, give me a sec. It's not important to try and be like someone else. It's important to be like yourself. It's important to play your own music. Express your own thoughts through, through the instrument, not someone else's. Stool the Band has a wide variety of influences, from King Crimson to Pink Floyd, and other such progressive rock legends like Bill Hicks. Keenan May I Nuts, sir, liked Bill Hicks so much that he wrote lyrics on being as woke as fuck because of him, and even attempted live stand-up comedy because of him. Put a guitar or drums and stuff behind it, and do okay, but when I'm up here on my own, I feel like I'm gonna shit my pants. <laughs> Whitney Houston, I am not. Early. No! Bad Maynard! No! Musicians can't be funny! That is not allowed! Just ask this guy! Super cool guy! <sighs> what were we talking about? Boy, I hope I didn't piss off Keenan Maytur. Then he'll just run back in his house and reuse all the Tool songs into another band and then reuse all of those band songs into another band and then have a perfect circle of recyclables. So how has Tool managed to last? How have they managed to stick around all this time while all the other huge bands of their time fickled out of existence by means of losing too many band members or wanting to join religion or other reasons? They've stayed a band based on a very calculated, cold form of processes of communication. And that is, as he so eloquently puts it, like a process of communication. Um, there's a whole band dedicated to the idea. It's called Circle Jerks. We all just got naked and uh, worked it out. One thing Tool's certainly done is solidify their place in musical history as a necessity. And they did that by naming themselves after things that humanity needs to survive, like Led Zeppelin or Beatles. You know, to like eat flies and shit. And to top it all off, Adam Jones is some visual visionary that did all the Tool's videos, a bunch of awesome movies in the background, by the way, I don't know if you noticed, but making your own videos is really fucking hard. And speaking of hard, have you ever heard of a song that changes meters and time signatures 47 times? The problem was that the music that we were listening to didn't quite have the climax right where we wanted the climax for our own personal masturbation. So what we decided to do is write songs that had the climaxes in the right positions for us depending on what day we were jerking off. So hey, if you like music, or tools, or music made by tools, then just follow these steps, and this is the sound of the like the tool in song time steps. Step number one is the first step, which means the intro. Write some simple 4-4 four, four D notes, you know, maybe with open strings. Save the complicated stuff for later, it's the intro. The next step is to remember all the stuff that we talked about earlier, what with the alternating time signatures and such. Like, I will choose 8-8 eight, eight dad butt rock chords and 9-8 bendy weird cool D note groove. Step three, you're not getting tired. Keep changing it up. Let's do like 15, 16 time signature and just write a bunch of trippy shit, dog. Step four is like in 10-8, uh, I think. And I just play a lot of open notes. I'm in standard tuning. Really anybody can play it. Step five, my lord, have you heard about triplets? And step
two-step finale, all you do is add some more trippy space whatevers. I mean, really, any time signature will do. Let's go back to 17. Seven. Let's, you know, let's, let's go 7, 8, 8, 8, repeating, uh, uh, squared over the center of pi. <laughs> Want to stay up to date on all the awesome stuff we're doing? Follow us on everything. Every single thing you could follow somebody on, follow us on it. So that every time you look at any screen in your house, Vow of Volition, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Bandcamp, Patreon, that's an important one. That's how we eat. That's how we don't starve. Don't forget Pornhub. Pornhub! Pornhub!